really seriously knocking on the door uh, only five years ago with their European election results. So we should just reflect on that, I think, because it is, a, you know, a, a, a real indication that you can change the weather on this. And you can, if you organise and you're systematic and you're determined, you can, you can uh, alter the, uh, the scene. Now, we face this new threat of UKIP. Uh, it is not, I would suggest, a fascist organisation. It certainly has some fascists within and around its ranks, but it is not another version of, of the BNP. Uh, probably best described as a racist populist organisation, one that changes its, its, uh, its presentation and its spots, and you can see that with, with Nigel Farage today, can't you? When he's, oh, I didn't really mean we wanted to repeal all the equality legislation. I'm really standing up for black kids in this country looking for jobs. I mean, you know, we all know it's utter nonsense, of course, but the fact that he, he reframes what he's saying and moves about in that way is, is indicative of a different sort of organisation than we've faced before, and it's a presents quite a, a, a different and difficult challenge in some ways. But I think the first thing we have to insist on is that UKIP is at heart a racist organisation. And you can see that very clearly in their, their fundamental position and, and it's exposed on an almost daily basis. And, and Farage has done it again, although I think he gave this interview a few months ago. It's surfaced, hasn't it, today? Uh, it's very clear where they stand. Um, and we, I think, have to organise to label them as what they are. And that was a big part, and this is where it overlaps with what we did to the BNP. We were able to finger the BNP for what they were and label them. And we have to do the same with UKIP and start to break away their softer support. Because, ultimately, there's quite a lot of people who have been drawn to UKIP because they're bluntly pissed off with what's going on. And it's... I, I, I work in Dudley and I live in Walsall and I've looked in some detail at some of the election results that UKIP have had there uh, and they have drawn their support from different constituencies not geographical constituencies different social blocks uh, and some of them are quite predictable, there's a sort of old right wing Tory block that doesn't quite like Cameron's commitment to gay marriage and so on, I am don't have a huge amount of research to back this up, but when you look at the, the wards that have moved in, in, in UKIP's direction, I think it's pretty clear that some of those are old Tory wards. And then there's the, re the remnants of the old BMP vote that also had some significance in some parts of the black country. But then perhaps more worryingly, and a challenge to us, there are the wards where there's a bit of an alternative vote being developing. I mean, I'll just throw this in. Uh, the one council ward that is held by the Greens in the whole of the black country is a ward called Neverton in Dudley. Two years ago, a Green councillor won there. At the recent, not so recent, May elections now, sorry, May last year, uh, Labour won. But what actually went on, UKIP came a very strong second, and it's pretty clear that a big chunk of the Green vote would appear to have moved in behind UKIP. And you can see similar effects. All the Lib Dem seats in the black country all fell to UKIP. In one case, in Wolverhampton, the candidate actually defected from the Lib Dems to UKIP. Uh, and the same is true in, in, in certain other seats. There's an independent socialist seat in the middle of Warsaw with a similar effect. So I don't want to go on at length about this, except to say that part of the UKIP vote is clearly people who are just very angry at the system what is, what is being done to them, what Cameron and the con, this coalition is doing to them, see no real alternative being promised from the Labour side, sadly, and have been prepared to get caught up in the UKIP thing. And I do think that's a challenge for us, then, to break those people from their support for UKIP. I don't, they, they are not, by and large, hardcore racists or anything like it, but they are people who have been driven to the point where they just feel anything to stab the system, two fingers to the system. I, I'll say no more about that beyond that. I've tried to sort of sketch in the type of challenge we've got. We've got various people being drawn towards UKIP and, of course, in the process, seriously, moving the whole centre of politics in Britain to the right on race and immigration. Other mainstream politicians now say things they would not have said, I would suggest, six, seven, eight, nine years ago. Uh, they are re-licensing mainstream racism in many cases and moving the agenda 
sharply to the right. So part of what we're seeking to do in breaking the momentum of UKIP is also to change that, that, that context, to change that uh, uh, background and, and, and the way things are, uh, are moving. Um, so just, just some concrete things. It, when we were dealing with the BMP, certainly in our area, we were relentless over 12, 15 years. Whenever they stood in a ward, we leafleted the whole ward, sometimes twice. We put up stalls, we contacted people, we networked, we got trade unions involved, we got the community organisations involved, and ultimately we wore them down, we broke off their softer support and demoralised their hardcore. That is much harder to do with UKIP in the same way because it's a much more diffuse and broad threat. We've, we've got them running in every single ward, we can't, or almost. We can't, we can't focus in the same way that we did. But I suggest we can still do something of the same operation, where, as I've already said, we seek to expose them for what they are. We expose their racism, but we also expose their broader anti-working class credentials, you know, as we all probably know in this room. Farage is for replacing, and he's on record as saying, he's for replacing the NHS with a private insurance scheme. He's for flat tax. Now, he sometimes tries to, re uh, in other words, everyone pays the same proportion of tax, whether you've got next to nothing as an income or, uh, you know, you're, a, you're, a, you're a, someone who earns ten, 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 hundreds of thousands of pounds and beyond. He sometimes tries to retreat from those commitments. We need to expose all of those things as part of a campaign that we will need to involve wider organisations in not just going out leafleting, you know, among a few committed activists. We need to involve the Labour Party where we can. We need to involve the Greens and other forces, certainly. We need to involve the trade unions. We need to involve faith groups. And all of these people need to be prepared to carry the argument on a, on a wide layer. Uh, we've started work, finally, in two constituencies in the black country, which... Uh, uh, the Tories pollster Lord Ashcroft, who spent some money, I believe, on polling to help the Tories in the election, does not he? He's, um, he says that Dudley North, for those who know the areas, uh, and Walsall North are within UKIP's grasp. And, and Dudley North, they are both Labour-held constituencies, interesting. So while UKIP is primarily a threat to the Tories in its short term, I mean, it's a much more serious long-term threat, as I've tried to, to argue, but in immediate electoral terms, they're a more immediate threat to the Tories in most places, but on our patch, actually, they're a threat to Labour. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the work that needs to be done in those two constituencies, we've got to really pay some attention to detail. So I've said some of the kind of broad strategies we're going to try and use. Anyone who can come and help us. The big demonstration on uh, uh, M21 is an important mobiliser. It should focus people in anti-racist work in the run-up to the election, but that won't be the end of the story. There will be a lot more detailed work to do. And uh, if you live over, particularly in the black country, any, any, any part of it, please go and have a chat with us afterwards, and I hope we can have a good conversation about how, how we can take this work forward. Thank you, Martin.